Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this Mercusis mesh system. It's a whole home Wi-Fi solution. It's the AC1900. If you don't know what a mesh system is, basically you have several nodes. One what's plugged into usually your main router or network switch, and then that wirelessly transmits signals to the other nodes which are around your house and then they all work together to make or give you one huge big wireless bubble what's around your house or place of business so no matter where you are in your house or business you can walk from one end to the other and you'll still be connected to the internet they're pretty good systems we've done quite a few mesh based systems in the past so we're going to see how this holds up against the others we have links in the description below if you are interested in purchasing or checking out the price bear in mind price changes on a daily basis at the moment with everything what's going off around the globe. Before we go on to the main video, if you would do us a favour, click that like button, subscribe, click the bell as well. And that way you'll get notifications of new videos and live streams we do. Again, doing all these things helps support the channel and helping to support the channel allows us to release more videos, better quality videos and more content exclusively just for you. Okay, as you can see, we've got the Mercury 6 box here. It's the AC1900 whole home mesh Wi-Fi system. And it says fill your home with mesh Wi-Fi. You can see a picture of the three nodes. It says it covers up to 6,000 square foot, which is 550 square meters. So it gives you a rough idea. Bear in mind, that isn't exact. I warn you that with any wireless coverage it is different houses, different buildings, different thickness walls, different equipment, electricity, and all this. And some houses have got extension with lead line and stuff. That can affect all um, things all together so again this is up to so don't expect it to be exactly that distance so it tells you about one unified network seamless uh, roaming on there gigabit ports as well which means you can connect really fast internet into it and it will share it with no issue and then easy app control so you can get an app to control it on the side of the box here it tells you a bit more about the specifications if you're really into all that and need to know more it is all there just so you can see, there's a QR code you can scan on that as well. On the other side, it gives you again another picture and a bit more information there. Uh, a bit more basic information is probably the best way to put it. It does say on the top it's got a three year warranty, which is good. And then on the back, it shows you roughly how you could set it up. So you'd set one next to your router, and then you'd have two nodes at different places within your house, which would help share the internet connection around. So usually I find that plugging one next to your router, uh, depending on the home setup, uh, where your stairs are, usually the one at the bottom of the stairs and then one on the top of your stairs and your landing area, that tends to share the signal out probably the best. But again, every house is a little bit different, but it gives you a rough idea. It will work on three gigahertz and 2.2 gigahertz um, frequencies as well. So it's obviously works on older and newer devices and it gives you a bit more information there. Okay, so this is what's in the box. First of all, we've got six plastic bags. Why we need six plastic bags, I don't know. That's uh, not the best for the environment, I must admit. If they could get rid of some of those bags, that would score a lot higher on the review. Save the environment, big thing these days, guys. Uh, let's do it. Right, next we've got three plug sockets, obviously one for each of these, so that's pretty straightforward. Nothing too special about those, they're all the same. And then you've also got a small Ethernet cable as well. You've got a, let's have a look, what's this one? It's not even in English. Oh, it tells you about the op operating frequencies and stuff like that, which no one's ever going to read, in all honesty, if they could even read it because it's that small. And then you've got the quick installation guide, which uh, does tell you all about how to do it. But bear in mind, a lot of it is in all different languages, so you're only going to get like two or three pages in the language of your choice. But to set these things up, it's usually pretty easy, as long as you don't want to change any settings. And even then, it's just a case of getting an app on your phone and away you go.
So let's have a quick look. So you've got the actual nodes here. They're about the size of a Rubik's Cube is probably the best way of putting it. If you look at the front, there's just one little hole there, which I'm guessing is a light, going to light up and let you know it's working. It's quite a thin plastic. It's sort of if it was any thinner, it would probably be see-through, and it's got a plastic base on there with ventilation, as well as serial numbers, model numbers, and so forth on the bottom uh, on there as well. So that's pretty straightforward. It's also got the default access um, login details on there as well. So on the back of the actual node, if you have a look on the back, you have got three Ethernet ports on there, so one slash LAN, a reset button, and that's where your power cable goes. So it's pretty straightforward. And each of these are all the same, so there's no real difference between any of them. So you'd plug whichever one you wanted into your main router, and don't think there's any on there What says anyone specific over the other doesn't seem to be so you just plug whichever one into your router with this cable and a power cable and then plug these two in different places in your house so it can basically spread the signal obviously don't put these in areas where you haven't got a signal the idea is is you put it in sort of their in-between area so it can spread it from that area and around and then they all work together so if one of them loses signal the other two obviously compensate and then when the third one's there it spreads the single the signal even better so let's just say you just had a router which was let's pretend this was your main router and it only sent a wireless signal that sort of um, size around then you'd had this node on and this node to the router then it'd send a signal that sort of area around you had the third node in and then suddenly you're covering a large a larger area and i'm guessing with these you can add even more nodes to make it cover even bigger areas if you wish okay so i've basically downloaded the app there's a qr code inside the manual you can download the app from the play store or apple store or whatever once you've downloaded it, it asks you to register. You create, obviously, an account with your email address and password. They'll send you an email, then you have to uh, accept it to verify who you are or whatever. And then you go back to the app, and then it'll ask you to log back in. And then it takes you to this page here. So it says, paint your home in Wi-Fi, and it says, let's begin. So you click, let's begin, hopefully. Here we go. And what you'll need, it says you need a halo, power adapter, and ethernet cable. Well, I've got the power adapter plugged in. I've got an ethernet cable as well, which has suddenly disappeared. Here it is. I'm not using the one they supplied because it's not long enough to go from uh, the mesh item to our router, uh, but I'm using another one, uh, which is a little bit longer. Their power cable, just to let you know, is one and a half meters long, if you need to know that for any reason. So you'll need all those. So we set up one first, it says, so you just press next. So plug your modem in, it says. So it says power off your modem and remove the backup battery if it has one so so basically you need to make sure your modem is totally switched off which i can't actually do because of the way we're recording stuff but uh, uh we're just going to pretend okay so if it does mess up my fault okay so it says plug in your device so i'm going to plug in the power cable into the back of this node it doesn't say which of these wan connections it needs to go in so i'm just going to plug it in the nearest one to the power cable and straight away, we've got a flashing amber light on the front. I'm going to press next. It says, check that your modem's on. So you've got to turn your modem back on, wait for your LED lights to come up and say it's connected. And I'm going to say it's stable. And then it says, solid yellow halo is starting up. That's what it's basically doing now, which means please wait. Uh, and then pultase in blue means it's ready for setup. So we've just got to wait a minute or two and hopefully this will change to blue. Oh, there we go. Just change to pultase, pultase in blue. It's more of a, let's say, mm, I'd say it's more of an aqua colour, uh, but yeah, so sort of a mix between blue and green. So uh, it says Halo LED is uh, up and running in blue, pulsates in blue, and have we connected it and so forth. It says connect to the Halo's Wi-Fi. So find that the Halo, which is connected to your modem, router, Ethernet, uh, blah, 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 default Halo printed on the product label. So I need to go onto my phone settings, go to Wi-Fi, 
and hopefully it should come up on the list, fingers crossed, Halo, there it is. So I click on Halo, it says it's unsecured and it's connecting. All right, it says it's connected, no internet connection at the moment. I'm guessing that'll change in a few seconds. So let's go back to the app. Let me find it. Okay, so I have connected. It says it's connected to the Halo, which is good news. And it's saying, where have you placed this? I'm going to say we are in office. Okay, so connection type, dynamic IP, you've got IPTV, you can leave all those settings the same if you're not sure. Press next. And now it's asking for a network name and password. So I'm going to call this network name TF which stands for tech for tax um, and I'll call it TFT office and then password oh well, I'm not going to show you that one but uh, no, I'm actually going to put a random one here because it shows it so I'm going to put a password as ABCDE one two three four five I do suggest you choose something a little bit more secure than that in all honesty so press next Connecting your Wi-Fi network. So I'm guessing that'll take a couple of minutes to put save the settings into there. Yeah, the front of it's now flashing red. So give that a few minutes to go. And when I've done these in the past with other mates, changing the settings can take usually anywhere between I found 30 seconds and in the most five minutes. So be prepared to just wait. It should go through in the end. Oh, here we go. There we go. It says it's set up. So it says connect to your Halo Wi-Fi. So obviously because we've changed the um, the ID or the name of it and the password, we're going to have to connect back up in the settings, obviously on your laptop or whatever it may be. So you can see there it says TFT Office. So I click on that, type in the password. What was it we said? Uh, A, B, C, D, E, one, two, three, four, five. Press join. It should now connect up. Yeah, it's got a tick next to it. It doesn't say there's no internet or anything like that, so we should, in theory, be connected. So if I'm going to go back to the app itself, here we go. So that says it's worked, and press connect, and it says, do you want to join? Yes. Just press join. Obviously, if you press cancel at any of these points, it's just going to stop you using it. So in basics, you have to press join, and I accept, and yes, whenever it asks you. So and there we go, it says it's connected, it says it's working, well hey, so we've got one node up and working, so that's pretty good. So I'm guessing in a second what we have to do is plug in the next halo, here we go. So it gives you an option to add another halo, so we press add another halo. So this is where you would plug it into a different place in your house, so not near it, obviously for testing on this we're actually going to do it right next to each other. So ideally you would be plugging this in. So let's just say if you've got one in your office, you'd put one in your living room and one in possibly the kitchen or a bedroom, depending on how your house is set up. So it says find a, a good spot. We're going to call, call this floor one, press next, plug it in. So we just got to wait for the light to start going through its motions again. So it's flashing orange at the moment. And I'm guessing that should go blue. Yeah, so we just gotta wait for that to go blue. So let's give it a few seconds. So we're still on orange at the moment. So let's just wait. It should get there sooner or later. Again, as I said, it can take a couple of minutes for these things to go through and add and from past experience up to five minutes. There we go, it's flashing blue. So the halo is pulsating blue. It's seen two halos, it's basically trying to talk between the two and share the settings between them, which is pretty clever. So then it copies the settings between the two, so then they're both working on the same username and password. So when you work from different places in the house, it automatically connects up to the other one without needing to swap between different networks. I'm guessing this again could take a couple of minutes to go through, so just bear with it. There we go, it seems to have gone through, so you can say where you're having this one. So I'm going to say it's going to be in the living room. That's optimising the network, apparently. There we go, that's complete, and then you just add another one, you do the same again, plug it in. 
So that's the one underneath at the moment. Press uh, next. And we've got to wait for the blue LED again. At the moment it is on. It's not even on. Let me make sure I've got the power cable switched on. Yep, good idea. There you go. It's flashing amber at the moment. So we've just got to wait for that to go through. It's on solid amber now. Uh, and then it should turn blue again. Be prepared up to five minutes, but it seems these are pretty quick, usually around about, I think it's about a minute to 90 seconds that we wait in here uh, for it to go through. But once that little light's gone blue, you're away and you can press the next button and then it configures it and they should all work together in theory. So let's just give it a few seconds more. Any time now, there we go, it's starting to flash blue. So we press the button. And as you can see, it seems to be syncing information between the other ones it finds. Bear in mind, the lights on the other ones have now turned white instead of blue. So I'm guessing that's a good sign. So we wait for those to talk to each other again, as we said, up to five minutes, but it's only taking probably 30 seconds. We're going to pretend this is in the bedroom. So and this is optimizing it for your network. Give it a few seconds and that's it. So now you press I'm done for now. Obviously, if you go out and buy some more of these, you can add another at a later date. So this is, I'm guessing, saving all the settings. Here we go. So it's come up on the app itself. Let me zoom in a little bit more so we can see the app 100%. Let's see if you can see that. There we go. Uh, it's showing basically the TFT office has got internet, it says devices home network. If you click on that, you can see uh, the unknown device and the speeds it's going at and stuff like that on there. You've got different modes you can do, you can change Wi-Fi, you've got um, advanced settings on there, blacklisting, WPS, parental control. You've got quite a few different options on there. If you go on their website, it'll tell you all the different things you can do with it. You've got three little lines at the top as well. That up there will give you the help and let you change uh, the network and your account details and stuff like that. But otherwise, it seems to be all up and running. So let me just do a quick speed test. It's not really a su sufficient thing way of testing here. We'll, we'll do a separate test when I take these to our home address um, because we've got a larger premises and we'll spread them out. Um, but if I just do a quick speed test here, press go. Again, we don't have the fastest internet in the studio, it just doesn't uh, have fast internet in this area, but we do have a lot faster internet at our home address. Uh, here we get around about anywhere, around about 12 to 10 or whatever, but it does go up and down quite a bit. Uh, because it is a shared connection, unfortunately. Um, but our home address will do proper tests in a few minutes. Well, actually a few hours, but a few minutes for you, uh, where we've actually got internet speeds of above 300 megabytes per second. But as you can see there, it is working and it's doing exactly what it should be. So we've got three nodes and they're all working together as, as, as if they're one node. So whenever you walk from one side of the house to the other, it all works. Test the speed of different routers, mesh systems, what I've got in this building. I'm going to use the Virgin Media router that we got supplied by, obviously, Virgin Media, which is our internet provider, as well as a Tender Nova MW6, which is a system I currently use, as well as this new Halo system, and see which performs the best. And it's going to be interesting to figure out which is obviously the best one because uh, I've been using the MW6 and it does very well from Tender. But obviously, if this performs better, maybe a time for me to look to upgrade. But what we're going to do first is I'm going to connect up to the Virgin Media router we've got. Where are you? If it's going to be on that list, there it is. So, basics is the layout. We've got a three bedroom house and the internet comes in downstairs and comes in the wall in the far corner. Then it has to go across that room, up the stairs, uh, along a little bit of a landing, and then into our office room, which obviously is a bit of a difference. And we get a very slow internet because of that. So, well, the wireless is, causes it slow because of the distance and all this, uh, the stuff it's got to go through. But if I do a test directly from the router, so this is testing how fast it comes from the router. You can see here, we're lucky to get over 20 
megabits per second. Bear in mind it's coming in at the wall at around about 400 to 420. Upload speed is not too bad, 36. I always find it strange that the upload's always faster than the download. You would have thought it would have been about the same, but hey ho. Uh, latency, 18 milliseconds. Now I'm going to connect up to the tender mesh system we use which is this one here you can see it's connected now secured connected okay and i'm going to run the exactly the same test so running this test now and as you can see that's flying above 200 260 270 280 so don't don't get me wrong it doesn't get that full 400 ish but it gets two thirds of that three quarters of it so it's not too bad the upload speed is usually pretty good as well so as you can see there is a big difference by me using the main router um, to a mesh based system so what we're going to do is just retest that again just to show you give you an average again just to show you it wasn't a fluke that it got that speed again speeds can go up and down a little bit on each test it gives you a rough idea so the last time it was 270, now it's 265, so within our margin of error. So what I'm going to do now, once that upload test is finished, just give it a couple of seconds. There we go. We're going to connect up to the halos from Mercusys uh, and do exactly the same test again. Bear in mind, I had to rename it TFT Office 2, mainly because we've connected up to another network. It wouldn't work straight away, so I had to go through the setup procedure again. Uh, but I'm going to run the speed test there, see how fast that comes in. As you can see, that's coming in pretty quick. It looks like it's going to go above 250, maybe 260. So it looks like it's not far off um, the same sort of speed as the mesh system from Tender, which is pretty good in all honesty. So again, upload speed, probably a fraction faster. Uh, again, milliseconds latency is actually lower at 15. I'm just going to rerun that test again just to make sure it's not a fluke um, just so you can't say oh yeah it was a one-off or whatever. So as you can see here it's redoing the test this time it's going probably around about 256 so a little bit slower um, but that upload speed is definitely quicker there's no question about that again if you'd notice it in real life probably not so much and this time it was 16 milliseconds and one last time just to make sure just to, for the sake of it, just to make sure, uh, again, we're getting 260 odds. So roughly, I'd say the Tender Nova and this are getting roughly the same download speed. But upload-wise, this is definitely getting a better upload speed, and it does seem to be a slightly better latency. If you're not sure what latency is, uh, that's basically sort of like the response time so it, uh, it can if you've got high latency usually two three hundred milliseconds or more it can cause what's called lag especially when you're gaming it can cause it to stop and judder and what's called rubber banding where your character jumps back and forward within the game if you're playing multiplayer online games but there you have it basically the both mesh systems perform very similar a hell of a lot better though than a root of what you've got uh, from your service provider so in conclusion, should I buy one of these or should you buy one of these? Well, if you've got a bad signal on your inter for your internet, as in your Wi-Fi, so for example, it's really fast when you're next to your router and then if you go to the next room, it gets a, a, a low signal or you just can't connect and the same when you go upstairs into the bedrooms, well, then I would recommend a mesh Wi-Fi system by whoever's brand it may be. Uh, there are lots of ones out there. As you can see, we tested this against the tender mesh system and again it got very similar results in all honesty for the similar sort of price range i think it's one of those things is find the one what does what you want it to do so there are some mesh systems out there where the wi-fi will only go up to 100 megabits per second maximum because of the connections on the actual device and then you get other ones which go well over a thousand depending on how you want to add it up but in basics this device does everything it says on the tin so if you can get it for a very decent price then i suggest you purchase it it's as simple as that one thing it does have an advantage over for example the uh, tender mesh system which i have mentioned a few times is it has a free ethernet ports on it compared to two on the tender what that basically means is on the extra nodes you can actually plug devices directly into the nodes let's just say a 
printer what doesn't have Wi-Fi but it's got Ethernet connection or you've got a network attached storage device or any other device like even a, a, a gaming PC which do, you don't have a wireless built into it you can connect it directly to the node with an Ethernet cable and then it sends the, the signal wirelessly to the other node which then goes through to your router and goes obviously gets you online and so forth so that's one advantage you can even potentially put uh, other network switches on top of that as well so it does give you that just a little bit more uh, room to add more devices to the actual network if needs be but overall i'm very happy with this it does everything it, um, it says on the tin so i can't do anything but highly recommend this product Thank you for watching this video everyone, it's really appreciated you made it all the way to the end. Please make sure you subscribe, like, comment and even click that bell so you get notifications of new videos and live streams. It does help support the channel and supporting the channel basically means that we can release more content for you and also better quality content going forward. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.